a new home for a while. Let me feel alive. Hi guys, eccoci qua con Carlos, questa persona super speciale che vi ho detto che ho incontrato per caso, poi gli ho raccontato anche lui la storia e ci abbiamo ri a riso sopra e oggi adesso facciamo una chiacchierata perché lui è un grande viaggiatore, più di 70 paesi visitati nel mondo e oltre ad essere un viaggiatore è anche una persona che ospita a casa sua dei viaggiatori. Adesso siamo qua a casa sua, io e padre Mario, padre Mario l'ha seduto che, che guarda le sue cose, però iniziamo subito dalla prima domanda, chi è Carlo? Una buona domanda, chi è e Carlo? <ride> ma, ma il mio italiano è molto buono, so, io sono parlare in inglese. <ride> Va bene, anche uh, l'inglese. Uh, hi guys, who is Carlos? Uh, Carlos is a, is a guy who lives uh, in Mexico, in Leon, Guanajuato. So I've been living here in Mexico for my, all my life. So I've been traveling since I was like a 21 years old and since then I cannot stop to travel anymore so I like it very much and I like to do rock climbing and high mountain and I like to do a lot of exercise so I like it and when I go to travel I like to run in by the streets or by the mountains or try to do some exercise or climb a mountain or do some rock climbing in some country and I like it very much because you know I feel like uh, I'm free and I like to meet people from other countries, meet a uh, new uh, kind of food, uh, new people and see how the difference between the people and from another country than Mexican people. So that's very nice for travel. Questa è la, è la sua introduzione. Ovviamente io le domande e le faccio in inglese, poi il mio inglese lo taglio così da sottotitolare solamente lui come faccio sempre. Altra domanda per eh, Carlos, abbiamo detto quanti paesi, più di 70, adesso gli chiediamo un numero preciso, se se lo ricorda, e come viaggia solitamente, perché come sapete io viaggio con la Panda, lui ha viaggiato in modi differenti. Come viaggio? First, how many countries did you visit? More uh, I've been busy between uh, 70 and 75 countries around the world. And how I travel? Normally I travel in like a backpack, uh, backpacker traveling, but I like to do hitchhike and uh, traveling in a hostel, doing couch surfing, and I like to do volunteers as well. Normally, I like to do like a, in a farm volunteers, but if I don't find a farm uh, to do a farm volunteer, I do like a, in a hostel, in a hotel, or fixing. You know, you know, it's very nice when you are like a keep housing. You know, like uh, people want to go to travel, and they tell you, okay, can you just stay in my house for three weeks? And, you know, doing what? Nothing, just watch TV, finish all the food in the fridge because we want to travel and we want to know someone keep our house and feed our cats and feed our dogs and just is the job you have to do it. So sometimes it's super nice because you've been traveling, you stay in another country, meeting other new people and sometimes you stay in a small village where the people is very friendly. So you go out to the uh, grocery shop or something like that to buy beer or something and the people is super friendly. So that's the way I like to travel. Come potete aver capito dalla sua risposta, anche lui viaggia low budget, con eh, pochi soldi, perché è possibile viaggiare anche con pochi soldi. Adesso gli facciamo una domanda che fanno spesso anche a me, visto i miei 56 paesi che ho visitato, che io però non ho mai una vera e propria risposta, però proviamo a farvi a lui. Qual è il paese più bello che hai visitato? Ah, è una domanda molto difficile per contestare per me, ma perché there are so many countries, but uh, one of my favorite countries is Pakistan. I don't know, I, Pakistan is still my heart, you know, the people are super friendly, the hospitality in Pakistan is fucking super nice and you have, you have a lot of landscapes, you can see the Nagaprabha, the Rakapochi, K2, and so many mountains. It's a super nice landscape. The food, fuck, the food is wonderful food, you know, and you can eat many things. The only problem in Pakistan, you cannot drink alcohol, you know, because <laughs> the alcohol is forbidden, but you can find another stuff. Because Mexicans drink alcohol? 
Yeah, yeah, Mexican <laughs> beer, a lot of beer, yeah, yeah, a lot of beer and tequila. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yes, you can miss the alcohol, but you can smoke something in, in Pakistan. So yeah. I think Pakistan is one of my favorite countries. So if you have the opportunity to go to Pakistan, don't miss to go to Pakistan. And Pakistan is a super cheap country and safe. I can say safe because yes, it's safer than here. And I mean, yes, it's, 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 it's amazing country. Yeah. Visto che ha parlato di sicurezza, gli facciamo un'altra domanda. Gli, fa... gli chiediamo a Carlo se hai mai avuto delle brutte esperienze, se hai mai avuto delle rapine oppure se ti hanno mai picchiato. I can say uh, it's a bad experience because uh, I got stolen my phone, my mobile phone in Ethiopia. On my way from the hostel to buy a SIM card, you know, I was on the street and then one guy came to me by my left side and they started to hand me with my jacket and asking for money and I said no no I don't have money and I don't have money and then another guy appears in front of me with a some kind of plate tried to sell me some Kleenex and he told me you want to buy a Kleenex and I want a Kleenex and I said no 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 but you know at some point I want like a discussion with the guy hanging my, my arm with the jacket here and another guy tried to sell me the Kleenex and then another guy started to push him right back and then someone put down the zip of my jeans and took my phone and You that's know, it. That's it. You know, and after <laughs> one minute, I said, my phone. And the guys, they were gone. They yeah. disappeared completely. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the only time that's happened in all your experiences? Uh, bad experience, yes. Parlando di sicurezza, no? visto quello che gli è accaduto, e visto che lui è messicano, e visto che tanti dicono che il Messico è pericoloso, proviamo a chiedere a un messicano viaggiatore Cosa ne pensa del me della sicurezza per i viaggiatori, per i turisti qua in Messico? In Messico. It's safe for a tourist people to travel in Mexico. I mean, it's not unsafe. You know, if you really believe in the news, okay, Mexico is a dangerous place to travel, you know. But Mexico, you can see him, you know. Yeah. You can see his father. He's been traveling in Mexico for more than three months in a car, camping in many places. And you can ask them if they are feeling unsafe and they say no, you know. And i, I do like a, this uh, cow surfing, so I got many people here in my apartment and all the time I ask, have you feel unsafe or is, no, it's, everything is cool. So I can say Mexico is a good place to travel. I mean, if you go to the north of Mexico, I mean, I don't recommend because it's not nothing to do there. But if you go to the south, it's going to be super nice and super safe. So you can travel in Mexico very safe. Good. Yeah. <ride> allora, gli facciamo le ultime due domande e mezzo. Allora, una, sempre riguardante i viaggi, qual è stato, visto che sei in Messico, quindi eh, si vede che hai abbandonato un attimo il viaggio, qual è stato il tuo viaggio più lungo? Perché tu fai on e off, non sei un viaggiatore costante nel tempo, perenne diciamo. My last travel I spent like a three years and a half, when I started in China, and then from China I went to New Zealand, and then New Zealand to Australia, and then Australia, Papua New Guinea. Then, wow. Yeah, yeah, Papua, yeah, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. yeah it's, it's, a, it's a tough country. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough country, but it's nice at the end, you know, it's nice, yeah. the food is super good, but the people is, uh, uh, it's not very friendly, but oh, okay. yeah, 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 but it's, it's, it's nice country, you know, you will survive. If you are a real traveler, you will survive. If you are like a tourist traveler, oh, i don't recommend to go to Papua New Guinea. You can go to Papua New Guinea probably in 20 to 25 years, but right? <laughs> not now. <laughs> and then from Papua to uh, Philippines, and then uh, Philippines to Emirates, and then Emirates to Pakistan, and then Pakistan to Turkey, the Turkey to Egypt. Yes, because this was during the pandemic. Yeah, that was during the pandemic. So that was, I start to, I, because I spent seven months in Philippines, and then I said, like, I cannot stay here longer. So I started to searching for countries open for international tourism. So I found Emirates open and I said, let's go to Emirates. And then Emirates, okay, let me find another Pakistan. Let me go to Pakistan and then Turkey and then Egypt. And then I went through Africa. Mi è venuta una domanda in più. Sorry. Pakistan, hai detto che è il paese che però ti ha dato di più. Saresti mai andato in Pakistan, in Pakistan se non fosse stata per la pandemia che apriva il turismo oppure no? Before Pakistan was in my bucket list because I like to do high mountain, you know, and I like to go to the summit to the big mountain. So I did my, my biggest mountain was in Ecuador, it was like a 6,500 meter high, 
was the Chimbo Russell Mountain. So in my in my mind is like a, after doing like a Aconcagua in Argentina and then from Argentina going to some place in Pakistan to do another 7,000 or 7,500 meters. The pandemic accelerated the process <laughs> to go to Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Next project, next trip, prossimo viaggio, prossimo... Well, prossimo viaggio, prossimo viaggio, viaggio in uh, un anni, un, un anni e mesa, troppo, un anni e mesa, troppo, un anno e mezzo, un anno e mezzo, uh, stare qui in Messico, and then I will go to, I, I want to start in, in Iceland, and then from Iceland to go to the Nordic countries, and of then Europe. Uh, of Europe, and then go to the Baltic countries in Europe as well, and if it's not uh, still the problem, crossed by Ukraine, and then to Moldova, and then uh, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and then from there to go to Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, Warimikistan, everything in finishing <laughs> an. <laughs> an, and then uh, go to uh, Nepal, and then India, to go down to Bangladesh, and then finish in Sri Lanka, and Sri Lanka, we will see where we can go. How many more left we have? Uh, I, I don't know, I don't know. I, I want to do a lot of uh, work away. Actually, I found uh, in Iceland, I found a, a, a volunteer, I can do it there. So, and also they pay you. So, and, and they, that volunteer, the whole time they request people to go there because they are super far away from, from the city. So, no one wants to go. Yeah. So. I found it there and I know in uh, Norway and there are expensive countries, but you can find a lot of volunteers there. So my plan is to do everything volunteers, go volunteer, 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 and okay. then go to the, the Baltic. The Baltics are a little bit more cheaper than the Nordics, so do the same. But then in Georgia, everything, everywhere try to do it like a volunteer because with the Mexican passport, you can stay, for example, in Ireland, you can stay three months. In the Nordic, Nordic countries, you can stay three months. In Georgia, you can stay six months. So yes, in different countries, you have a lot of time. So, and I like to stay in the countries for long periods, you know, because like uh, Fabrizio said, we are not a tourist. We are real uh, travelers, you know. Yeah. So we like to be inside the culture where we are. You know? Okay. Grazie, Carlos. L'ultima mezza domanda. Yeah. Perché fai couchsurfing? Perché ospiti i viaggiatori? Because I like to I like to meet a, a travelers like me, and it's nice to to pay back when I did car shopping in other countries and how the people will be with me, and I like to be the same, you know, because it's nice to to have a, a good place to stay and feel free and go to the places and get some advices to go to so different places. So. That's why I'm making like a, a traveler, you know, because you can get so many advices to go to one place or another place. And for now, now I have like a, probably I can go with him in Nicaragua in <laughs> March. So that's super nice, you know, that's why I do that shopping because you meet a lot of people. Yeah, that's no spoiler. Probably we'll see you again in Nicaragua. Attention that there's Padre Mario. Padre Mario. In YouTube lui è Padre Mario. Ah, Padre Mario. Ha una domanda per te. Tante... Quando tu hai finito di girare tutto il mondo, che fai? Ricominci? Tanto sei giovane. No, I will try... One of my goals for traveling is to find a country where I like to be, to live there. I mean, not because Mexico I don't like, because I feel like... Uh, I, I feel like uh, my soul and my spirit want to live in another country, so... When I found a good country to live, I will choose that country. But so now I want to I want to be in other world. So you, you have one now in the list? Ne hai uno nella lista adesso? Uh, no? I know you told me one. Yeah, yeah, there is one in Vietnam. Okay. I like it very much and I like it Pakistan as well. Okay. Yeah. So, Pakistan is hard to live. Yeah, it's, it's hard, but you pa can... Pakistan credo che sia difficile da vivere, bello da turista, viaggiatore, ma da vivere. <laughs> Grazie mille. Carlos. Grazie mille, Buon guys. Come, come vi ho detto ci siamo conosciuti per caso e per caso è nata questa amicizia che si porterà nel tempo. Va dato già uno spoiler, probabilmente lo rivedrete con me in Nicaragua tra qualche mese e viaggeremo un po' insieme in Panda.
Ah, perché no? <ride> perché no? Noi ci vediamo ci domani. Vediamo, domani. Ci vediamo, ragazzi. Buon anno. Buon anno. <ride> Prospero, Prospero anno. anno. Prospero anno a tutto il mondo. Prospero. Ciao, bye ciao. Bye. A new place, a new home, for a while, let me feel alive.